Tonight, Tropical Depression 10E limps through the Riviagigedo Islands. And now the latest for around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for August 15th. So the tropics sort of calming down after the recent little burst of activity. 10E is clinging on by a thread in the eastern Pacific and the remnants of Miri are still traceable way up there now near the Kamchatka Peninsula over the Kuril Islands. Let's check worldwide the basins in the Atlantic, day 76 of hurricane season and there is nothing on the radar now for potential activity. We watched that area of interest move through into Texas inland, that's uh, spurred on quite a bit of debate about whether it had rotation or not and could have been a tropical depression. In the eastern Pacific we have a tropical depression, 10E, although it's very unlikely at this stage it will get a name. It appears to be already already on the weakening trend uh, and looks like it's about to give up. In the western Pacific now then we've got nothing active unless you count extra tropical storm Miri which is way up there at 50 degrees north way way off the top end of our map and elsewhere we have nothing on the radar for the next five days not yet but there is something that could happen very low confidence which is why it hasn't been marked uh, potentially in the Philippine Sea uh, Indian Ocean no areas of interest right now either 3A is long since vanished from the Arabian Sea it was always going to be a short-lived storm so let's check satellite imagery across the Atlantic right now. You can see a big burst of uh, convection there, a disturbance of sorts in the uh, sort of central to western Atlantic. Uh, further towards the west you might be able to make out that uh, invest that moved into Texas and delivering a lot of rainfall. Uh, also uh, showers over Central America. Looking to the eastern Pacific you can see Tropical Depression 10 on the left hand side of another disturbance which is actually bigger than it uh, but has not been designated because it's got no chance. Dry air reigning supreme out to sea there. Uh, with a few other little disturbances in the intertropical convergence zone. Here's a look at Invest 98L and the apparent rotation that is quite clear to see moving inland well over Texas now, not far from the Mexican border. Um, so quite fascinating to see how that one has evolved. And there towards the bottom left you can see visible imagery of uh, 10E which is wrapping round again uh, has a little blow of convection in the last few hours otherwise at this point we might have gone for remnant low uh, but as it is right now that is still a tropical depression uh, but it's uh, we've seen better storms that's for sure and uh, I, I say storm it's not actually a storm it's not got storm force winds and that's why it is a depression at 35 miles per hour Here's the Western Pacific satellite imagery and you can see it's just a big mess of uh, flurry of storminess but not any organized things that we can call a tropical storm or anything closely resembling that at all. It's just a huge amount of rain, monsoonal kind of stuff, well not quite, more towards the western area. Just general doldrums of the tropics. And in the Indian Ocean you can quite clearly see another uh, inland depression there by the looks of things moving inland from the eastern coast of India. Assuming this imagery is up to date, I think it is. Um, and the Australian region, just as I checked that the imagery is all up to date there. A few blow-ups off the coast of Indonesia, but apart from that, uh, a very quiet scene across the Australian region and the South Pacific. Very quiet, as you would expect, considering it's the middle of winter. I believe some places in Australia are getting close to freezing out in the desert this morning. Uh, currently right now, so here's the sea surface temperatures. Very warm around 10E, but fading away quite quickly uh, it's the only thing that's probably on its side still 26 to 28 degrees it is upwelling un underneath the uh, 10e as well so struggling a bit more with that look at the atlantic warm temperatures just waiting to be taken advantage of 28 degree isotherm extending over a huge part of the western atlantic ocean um, all the way up to the gulf stream it's inseparable from the actual ocean to its south and the indian ocean fairly warm 
uh, and in the Western Pacific, once again, you're looking at very warm temperatures. South China Sea a little bit cooler, but the Philippine Sea is absolutely up there and still a very warm pocket extending up towards Japan, uh, which is what I would be concerned about. Uh, southern coast of Japan, we've already seen um, Miri just move through there, weak storm albeit, but maybe a sign of things to come, it's too early to say, but very warm SSTs off Japan. And China compared to average, you can see the east coast of China there, well above average when we look at the anomalies here. Gulf of Mexico is around average, it's equalized a little bit, but the um, sort of subtropical and extropical zones of the Atlantic, very warm compared to average. Same with the Pacific, La Nina effect is still very much there in the central Pacific. Check out the Caribbean there for huge oceanic heat content values. I think it might even be going off the scale. And in the Western Pacific, you can see there very high values once again as well. And Eastern Pacific is slowly but surely getting up there a little bit, uh, which might suggest that we could still see some systems into the late season that might have a go at it as well. Check the computer models then and you can see the Atlantic over the next five days, nothing much happening. You can see a non-tropical low forming off Nova Scotia though and sweeps inland over Nova Scotia and could deliver tropical storm conditions, although not tropical. Uh, so storm conditions that would be, uh, but when you have a quick glance at it, first look, you might be forgiven for thinking that it could be a tropical cyclone, but it won't be, it'll be non-tropical throughout, but it'll be an interesting little feature to have a look at. Eastern Pacific, you can see the demise, very slow demise of Tropical Depression 10, uh, and doesn't move very much as it does so either. If you've seen the National Hurricane Center's cone, you'll be able to verify that. Um, but apart from that, after that, there's nothing coming up behind it, waiting in the wings. So it looks like in the Atlantic and the Eastern Pacific, we're in for a quiet period. Let's check the Western Pacific. So a fairly quiet period to begin with, but this is the GFS model and it's more bullish than a lot of the other models so far, but it says at the end of that five day period, it wants a storm to form, quickly wrap into a typhoon near the Mariana Islands, but other models aren't yet on board with that. GFS are also going for possibly a monsoonal type system in the South China Sea, much like Mulan, as a matter of fact. Uh, by the time we get to the 19th there, that's day four and five. Longer range, looking first at the Eastern Pacific here. Uh, you should see a new system try to form right at the very end of the 10-day period. I think there it is starting to form just off Nicaragua, uh, so quite far east, particularly for the time of year. Uh, but you never know, that is way out there, that's towards nine, day 9, day 10, uh, so I wouldn't put much faith into that one just yet. Apart from that though, really nothing to track in the Atlantic or the East Pacific right through August 25th, which is quite surprising. Western Pacific then, you get this typhoon that continues northwards and then uh, rounds this massive general low pressure area to its west and uh, gets steered towards Japan once again. So like I was saying before, you know, uh, we could have more systems affecting the Japanese islands. This one due to that massive low pressure area to its west that it's being steered around. Well, that's all the important stuff at this point. Uh, you can check out the 413 store by scanning the barcode. It will take you straight there. And you can take a look at all of our merch products as well as the getting more famous, still waiting for Hone shirt, of which we still are. There's also individual and full season animations up for grabs there as well on request. Long range in the Atlantic, uh, the best we can offer is a weak tropical, possible tropical cyclone there rounding the Cape Verde Islands. Uh, might be a tropical depression, but that's the extreme long range. So it's uh, really surprising that up to 16 days out, that's the best the GFS can offer us for the Atlantic Ocean. I know in previous years, the GFS was caught off guard with Atlantic storms forming unexpectedly but it usually calls the big ones way before they happen usually crying wolf until it actually happens so it's a surprise to see GFS is not throwing out anything at the moment 
East Pack, it's got another tropical storm there as well, a short-lived one because it collides with the coast of Mexico. Um, when we get to see the repeat of that, you'll be able to see it again. But there it is. So that's the system we were talking about forming off Nicaragua and then moving up west-northwestwards, um, slamming into Oaxaca, I think it is, or Guerrero, and then moving inland and obviously losing its momentum. Western Pacific, we see what happens with that typhoon. It's slowing down off the coast near Tokyo and then makes landfall further up the coast north of Fukushima. Uh, and then towards the very long range, you get this enormous low pressure that tries to become a tropical cyclone. And I think it succeeds when you look at that imagery. That's just amazing. Um, so God knows what's going to happen with that. That's just That would be ridiculous if we saw anything like that happen. But that's August in the Western Pacific for you, such an uncertain part of the year. Meanwhile, on August 15th, 2002, we had Typhoon Fanphone, which was a Category 4 and threatened the coast of Japan as well before steering away at the last minute. And Tropical Depression 20W had just formed in the South China Sea. Just for perspective, this year so far, we're up to 9W, so 2002 was more than doubly active by this point in the year in terms of numbers. Elsewhere that year, there was nothing active around the world. Just as we are right now, pretty much, apart from that tropical depression, the next name in the Atlantic Ocean then is Danielle in the Eastern Pacific, Yvette. In the Central Pacific, we're still waiting for Hone. Moving on to the Western Pacific, the next name there now is Ma'on, followed by Tokaj or Tokij. I'm not sure on that pronunciation just now. North Indian Ocean, the next name is Sitrang there. And we've had 45 storms this year so far. That's only halfway to the average. In the Southern Hemisphere, Darien is next up in the Australian region, Ashley in the Southwest Indian Ocean, and Harley in the South Pacific. That's all for tonight. We'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night.